Good morning. You're on the air. We're under oath. Last couple of calls. What do you got? I have a question for you, Mike. Yeah. Uh, I want to know if you have ever and how many times masturbated to Carmen behind her back without her knowing. <laughs> Not behind her back, but in front of her a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you this, sir. Uh, no, I don't recall doing that, uh, but I have uh, uh, thought about her during sex. Not on purpose. She just, like, entered my head. And at first I was like, why, why? And then I went, don't fight it. Just enjoy it. <laughs> so I hope that helps you out there. Carmen, Anytime I'm sorry. You, it's a fine. Anytime you come into, like, my sex dreams or anything like that, you're yelling at me. Yeah. <laughs> you really That's throw, how you finish. Yeah. You really she throw likes, me off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I have to tell you, um, Carmen, I do find attractive. I think she's adorable. And... Um, when she first started working here, I always tell you when she ripped that shirt off and she was wearing a sports bra, I was like, what do we got going on over here? What's happening? <laughs> she's hot. But now it's she's almost like in the daughter range. Like, I can't find her sexually attractive, even though I think she's cute. It's because she's old, Carmen, now? No, 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 no. It's because I'm old, Mike. Wow. Uh, Mike, how's the show? Good morning. You're on the air. We're under oath. What do you got? Hi, guys. Good morning. I was just curious, Mike. Are there any plans current or in the future to have Carmen join the show from your studio? And have somebody replace her duties from station like Dizzy or somebody else? No, because the problem, and I'm going to tell you, I love that. But the problem is, is that then they have to pay somebody and, and add another body to the show to run the board and stay at the station so that Carmen could come here. When the simple fact is she's doing just fine over there. And, you know, it's uh, there's no plan. I would love it if it happened, but it, it's definitely an expense that we don't need to be paying at this time. Right. We already have six people on this show. Yeah. So that would be putting seven people. Yeah. And it's that's it's just unnecessary. I mean, it sucks that one person doesn't have to be here, but she is here every day. I mean, she's on the camera. She's in the studio uh, on the microphone, you know, so. And honestly, I'm at first I did not like the idea. I thought it was going to be me getting pushed out or just not or me being not a part of the show as the much. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I didn't let it happen, did I? <laughs> Um, so I honestly thought that it was kind of like me getting phased out, but I, but now that we've been doing it, I want to say like almost two years now. Yeah, I'm used to it. I like being here by myself because if I don't feel like getting dressed up, I don't have to. Exactly. Which, which I rarely do. Yeah. And and then on top of that, I kind of just get to like do my own thing and yeah. have my own you little quiet moment. room. Yeah. So I'm used to it now, and I and I do enjoy it. She can order breakfast when she wants. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike Calvin show. Last couple of calls. You're on the air. We're under oath. What do you got? Hey guys, couple small things. Are you guys aware of the smoke detector beep on the intro? And also aware of how many times you guys say I got to tell you because I got to tell you. You say it a lot and you all you you get me the over under wins at work here between the guys. So some days yeah. you cost me money. Some days I uh, well, listen, win the money, so you, you I talk, like it. You talk for 20 hours a week, and you start saying things over. Uh, I, I don't know what the smoke detector thing is on the intro. We don't record oh. the intro live. Like There's no live audio on there, so I don't know what that would be. Maybe there's a beep you're thinking as a smoke detector? Hmm. Uh, it's, it sounds like it. Like I don't know if the guy recorded it at his house or not and sent it in to you guys, but... Yeah, it's always got me. I always turn the radio up just to hear it. It's all which part? All right, yeah, yeah. Where? Uh, on the I'm about to whoop somebody's ass. It's the the second one. All right, we'll we'll listen for it tomorrow. Sure. I gotta Thank tell you, you, this guy's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take the over. Take the over. Got him. Uh, last three calls. Good morning. You're on the air on the oath. What do you got? Hey, Mike. Love the show. I had a quick question for Dalvin. He takes a lot of pride in running a really good new section on your show. But sometimes it sounds like he gets really upset and frustrated when you continuously interrupt him and moving on to the next news story. And I wanted to know, honestly, if it really does bother him as much as it sounds like it bothers him. What, what if it bothers well, right me? Now. Maybe I'm. Uh, maybe it bothers me that he's trying to do news and I want to talk. Well, it's, it's usually you're telling a dream story. We all know how much we love those. <laughs> There's no room for dream stories in New York. Uh, yeah, sorry, the yeah, dream yeah. stories are the worst. Uh, but no, I- interrupting, like, that's the whole segment. You know what I mean? Like, that is what that segment is set up for, is for us to talk about stuff. And it doesn't even have to n- necessarily be what the news story is. So, I don't know. Like, I try to keep things moving along. Like, once I feel like we've talked about the subject long enough, I go... In other news, blah, 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 you know, start to, into the next story. But I never get upset about any of it. If I do, I do it on air, and I like, all right, yeah, Jesus, yeah, enough yeah. already. No. 
Uh, I hope that answers okay. your question, sir. Uh, Steve Hurley came through with a question. He said that once I said on the on the uh, show that after our show, Mo's show was my favorite show to listen to. Does that still hold true? And what are your second favorite shows on the station? Yes, I still love Mo's show. I liked it when it was him and Kevin and Spike and and that, but uh, him and Spike do a good job. What what is your favorite show, uh, Galvin? I don't really listen to the station. I mean, I'll, I'll just be <laughs> honest, honest with you. Yeah. I really don't because I'm not in my car. And if I'm in my car, I'm listening to music. Yeah. So that's my honest thing. I really don't. And it's not like a slight to anybody. No, no, you're you know. doing something else. Yeah. Spanish. My favorite show on here. I would probably say. Mo show. I think I say your boyfriend Dizzy's after Ooh. show. Oh. oh, I forgot about uh, that. Yeah. Uh, too late. Geo. Uh, yeah, yeah, I pro- I hear Mo show when I'm driving. It's a, I'm just in the car that time. That's the thing, the car. Yeah. Carmen? Um, I'm kind of with Galvin. If I'm not here, I'm not listening. But so the, really the only show that I ever catch is the after show with Dizzy. Mm. And I think he does a great job. That's not a Joe? show. Uh, it yeah, is. it would either be sad weirdos or, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or uh, or the Mo show because that's yeah, that's usually what I, what I wind up. Watching. I do listen to a lot of Drew show too. Um, I just like the dynamic. So you just don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the dynamic between the way Spike gets Mo all mad all the time makes me yeah, laugh. I don't I like really that. listen to the station though when I'm not you know. I do, I do, I do. I feel like uh, I I listen and I'm anxious to hear what people have to say. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't like to only because like if they are covering a news story that we all already covered, or if they cover a news story that we're going to cover, I don't want to be influenced. I don't let them influence me. Mm. I'm, I'm strong minded. I'm very impressionable. <laughs> uh, good morning. Last two calls. You're on the air. We're under oath. What do you got? Hey guys, love the show from day one. I've been listening, but I got a big question. You said at one point you would be able to disclose more information about the Hulk uh, ordeal. And I don't know if you ever did that, and I missed it, but could you do that? What specifically do you want to know? Because I really am not allowed to talk about it, but what is there something specific you well, want to know? Yeah, any secrets that you could relay, but obviously you can't. So. No, I have no, I have no, everything that you've heard has all been one, I would say 99% untrue if you've heard it from a certain source. <laughs> um, uh, I have so little to do with that situation that I've been dragged into and dragged across the, you know, dragged through the mud on it. Yeah. I don't really have anything to add to it because I don't really know anything about it. If you look at the facts of the situation, none of it really even involves me. It's just somebody That's trying to thought. put me in the narrative and try to make it seem like it's a, it's a sexier story. If you involve me and trying to get people's jobs and all that stuff. And none of that is true. Right. None of it. I mean, look, right. I got nothing to lose. That thing is closed. I could come out and say whatever I want and be like, ah, I got you all now. None of it is true. I, I, you know, if it was, I'd write a book about how I pulled off the greatest scam ever, <laughs> but none of it is true. It's all a matter of one person refusing to admit that they're the cause of all their problems. And the fact that all the people who have been around them for all these years left him because he's such a horrible person, but yet everything is somebody else's fault. So I think it's pretty obvious to the people who know the situation. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And this is the last call for Under Oath. Make it good. You're on the air, Under Oath. What do you got? Hey, great show, Mike. And I can't believe I made the cut. That's you're, awesome. Your last one. Don't screw it up. All right. Let's not screw this up. Geo. Geo, I've had a question for a while for you, and this is dialing it way back. Did you get fired? When you were on the uh, show with, uh, oh, I can't remember who Drew brought in from Orlando, but he brought in someone from Orlando, and suddenly you were off his show. Did he fire you? I mean, I, uh, I was kicked off the show because they brought in SBK. So what's uh, kicked I'm, off? Does that mean you were fired? Well, no, because I I, they pushed me to Mo's show at night. I mean, oh, I was, technically, I'm still guess, on the station. Yeah. just not on Drew's show. Yeah, literally, I came in the office, and they said, there's too many people on Drew's show. And we're going to move you to nights with Mo and Johnny and try and build that up, which was an epic You did show. great on that show. I enjoyed that way back then, and I enjoy it now. I'm glad you're on the show, man. Thank you. Me too. Thank you. Huh. There is one more call here. I'm mm-hmm. going to take this. You're Now you're the final call. You're on the air. We're under oath. What do you got? Oh, yes. Never give up. <laughs> Stay strong. <laughs> hey, Mike. i uh, been watching you on the YouTube. You look great, by the way. Thank you. Hey, so, you know, as a head coach, my question to you would be, if you lost someone on your show from Galvin down to Pap Pap, who would you want to pick up and why? 
You, you like from the other shows? Uh, yes, Ooh. including the weekend. Um, so who would you lose, and then who would you pick up? Like if Spanish finally went crazy oh. and left? No, you have to fire somebody and hire somebody to replace them. I would fire Spanish. You're supposed to make eye contact me when I say that. I would fire Spanish, and I would hire John Cena. Oh, oh. I had that one locked and loaded. Oh, I've been thinking about these. <laughs> what do you think, sir? What would you do? No, I was in the... Uh, Definitely would I would drop ooh, Spanish, not take Will. You drop Spanish and get Will. Wow. Mm, yeah. I like Will. By the way, Will is through the Thank roof you. right now. <laughs> <laughs> Will's like, yeah, do that. Do that. <laughs> I'm going to tell you now, under oath, I would not fire Spanish. He's not on the verge of being fired. He's not in the. I don't sit here and go, man, if only we can get rid of Spanish. Um, the opportunity passed. Joe, yeah. Joe is by far <laughs> the window opportunity. <laughs> I feel like he'll open up another. No. Joe is by far the worst person on the show. What? As far as being prepared and doing his job, and you're all surprised that by that. I yeah, am surprised. Joe, but Joe will never. I cannot be without Joe. Thank so, you, Michael. Yeah, you bring too much joy to my life. I can't trust that. him. Can't do his job. <laughs> nope. Never leaving. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're the Kramer to my uh, being. You're you're the you know just having you around makes me happy. Thank you, Michael. I, yeah. I do enjoy being here. I love you. Galvin is you know is solid. He does the most work. He's you know uh, Geo is great at what he does. Carmen's great at what she does. Spanish is pretty good. <laughs> at least you're not Joe. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, no, Joe's the worst. <laughs> I'm the worst, I'm the, I'm the worst uh, the TV worst. guy in radio. <laughs> He's the worst. You're just a little loser. Yeah. Joe's the worst TV guy in radio. That's <laughs> yep. exactly the yeah. great way to put it, Joe. You're well, the worst TV guy in radio. Yep.